that. We are all, all of us, primarily interested in ourselves. We grow up being interested in ourselves. Therefore, men tend to be interested in men and male things because little boys are interested in that. Women, as little girls, were only interested in girl things. We're interested in women. Doesn't mean we don't like each other. Doesn't mean there aren't places where we can communicate, hopefully. Okay, let's talk. Rising anti-Semitism in East Germany has voted the English only sign. Mm, 40,000 tons of oil with PCBs blew up the ozone layer today. Greetings, prisoners of gravity. This is Commander Rick. I've been watching beer ads and rap music videos and marveling at the strides that women have made in the last 20 years. You've come a long way, baby. Speaking of progress, have you read a superhero comic lately? Yeah? Then you're a guy. I hate to generalize, but reading superheroes is for boys. And as for women who create comics, they're as rare as female popes. And Nancy, actually, there is a woman comic creator, Trina Robbins. She wrote and drew Misty, a comic for girls, complete with paper dolls and cutout dresses. She did a four-issue miniseries for Wonder Woman, and she edited a pro-choice benefit anthology called Choices. And she still finds time to cook and clean and love her man. Actually, she found time to tell me how she first got hooked on comics. My parents never, like some other, unlike some other parents, never thought she shouldn't read comics. They're bad for her. She should read books because I read everything. I read all the books in the house and I read comics. I don't remember not reading, you know. Um, so I loved comics, and when I was a kid, there were a lot of comics that I could relate to because they had female characters. Besides the obvious Wonder Woman, there was Mary Marvel, who was a girl superheroine, not a woman, but a girl. There were all those jungle heroines who I was simply crazy about. Um, there were a lot of teen characters, teenage girl characters for me to relate to. A lot of Trina's favorite comic characters disappeared in the 60s when romance comics fell into weak cliches and the superheroes just muscled in. My friend Control spoke to a few women comic creators at a New York convention. June Brigman draws the new Barbie books. Now there's a comic that comes from the heart. Women in general don't grow up reading comics because there aren't very many comics geared towards women. So Barbie may help change that. You know, she was your basic June Cleaver model doll. But now, uh, in the Mattel catalog for Barbie, they have Barbie in a pilot's uniform. And Ken is the steward on the airplane, whereas, you know, 30, 40 years ago, it would have been Barbie as a stewardess. The kind of comics that are being done now are mostly comics that boys are interested in. They're mostly adventure comics and superhero comics. And I think that there may not be a lot in the comics that a female audience can necessarily identify with. Uh, so, little girls who read romance stories instead of adventure stories probably may not find superhero comics all that interesting. Um, I read adventure stories and romance stories, so I just put a lot of romance in my adventure comics, and hey, I'm happy. Louise understands why superheroes battle evil to impress women. Romance, or as guys call it, sex. Which brings us to the alternative comics. Now here's where women have found a forum. Quebec exotic dancer Sylvie Rancourt writes a semi-autobiographical comic, Melody. Another exotic dancer is Omaha the Cat Dancer. Omaha is written by the decidedly uncatty Kate Worley, drawn by Pussycat Reed Waller, and then chopped into kitty litter by Canada Customs. Omaha features fuzzy felines uh, feeling frisky. Gives new meaning to the problem of fur balls. Kate, it's Commander Rick. Does it bother you being one of a handful of women working in comics? I, I've got, I feel uneasy sometimes because I, I do have an unusual amount of prominence uh, for what I've done. There are women who've been working in this field for 20 years who still aren't getting their due. Um, I wouldn't say the, the industry itself is very discriminatory, but it's not 
very wise either. I don't think it's it's acclimated to the you know to the fact that there are women in this industry, um, and the, to a degree, women do just tend, even when their work is good, even when uh, they've been around a long time, to get overlooked as possible creators. Uh, most women in this field end up uh, working more and more in self-publishing because uh, they have more difficulty having anyone believe that their work could appeal to a general audience. Thanks, Kate. Okay, who else? Ah, Elaine Lee. Elaine Lee wrote Steel Town Rockers for mainstream comics and is now working on the alternative comic Starstruck with Michael Kaluta. Elaine, long time no see. How difficult was it for you to break into comics? If Michael didn't like my writing so much, I'm sure I wouldn't be doing it. I happened to find an artist that liked what I did, and I came in on that. Um, comics is a boys' club. It's all the, you know, it's largely for boys. But there, there, all these things have happened. Um, you know, I have a lot of women characters in Starstruck. Well, Love and Rockets has a lot of women characters and it's like oh the Hernandez brothers do that has lots of women characters these great women characters and with starstruck I would hear things um, overheard conversations that were like um, oh she's oh it's this woman who writes all this these women characters must be a lesbian you know <laughs> or you know it, it turns into something different um, not that I would get that upset by someone thinking I was a lesbian but it's just what an odd thing to jump to, you know. You should have said, I guess that means all those guys who draw those muscular male superheroes must be gay too. Thanks, Elaine. Now, a few of the men who write comics have created believable women characters. Okay, Chris Claremont. For over 15 years, he's filled X-Men with exceptional women. Chris, it's Rick. There was a period in the 70s when you were renowned for your female characters. The Claremont woman cliché, yes. Well, it's a good cliché. How did it develop? Basically, when I started writing, period, much less writing comics, I couldn't see any characters, female characters, that were anywhere near as interesting as the women I knew in real life. And I thought, why? Why couldn't a female hero, protagonist, be as dynamic, as courageous, as intelligent, as full of moxie and charm and chutzpah and pizzazz and whatever other adjective you want to come up with, as a guy? What, what was it that made a female character, the minute they took the lead, turn into a, a wimp? And I decided the heck with it. I would just write characters, male or female, that I would like to know. And somehow that turned into a cliché. Uh, the good side is that, that more people are trying to write stronger and more evocative characters now. The downside is that a lot of people still haven't got a clue. You know, it, it's, it's like female characters are, are there to put, you know, scanty costumes on and tear them off with great enthusiasm. Yeah, man, that's storytelling, eh? Evaporating bras and panties, and yet in 50 years, Batman's never even got a run in his tights? Thanks, Chris. To get a historical perspective on women in comics, let's call Steve Bissett. He's published a lot of women writers. Steve is 83 years old, and he was there when comics began. Or else he's 33 and he read about it. Steve, it's Rick. Why have comics moved with glacier speed to recognize women as comic readers and creators? 